Thank you. I've wanted to talk with you for a long time, and I noticed after I've been listening to you for probably 15 years, but I started hearing what sounds like voices my, in my, of my own that sound like it's your translation much, of a vibration yes, into a voice. In, yes. Yeah, into and a sometimes because Esther has been such a good model, it even sounds like your voice. <laughs> it's logical that it would because you equate one with the other. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So as it's evolved and I've come to trust it somewhat, I still uh, don't always trust it completely. And it doesn't always sound like Esther's voice just sometimes. So what I was wondering is when I'm meditating, which I enjoy so much, and I know you've said like watch the movie and let it go, which I do, there's a part of me that just wants to capture it all. I want to document it. I want to write down everything that I hear, everything that there's I experience. A, there's a little shortage consciousness in okay, that. Right. A less shortage consciousness would go like it's flowing. It always will. I now understand it. Whatever I want, whenever I want it. I've opened this. I can calibrate to it. Sometimes I'm better calibrated than others. Just let it evolve for the pleasure of it. We said to Jerry and Esther in the early days because Jerry was determined to record every word that came out of Esther's mouth <laughs> and did. <laughs> there is a hanger full of recordings. And then we said to them one day, you will need another lifetime to listen to these. And they thought we were kidding and now they know we were not kidding. <laughs> the whole point of all of this is if you think in terms this is good, especially in the context of this conversation here today. Every time you do that, think of it as an opportunity for calibration. It's like the guitarist is going to tune her guitar and she's going to enjoy this song, but she does not feel a need to capture every note that she plays. You see what we're getting at? It's a wonderful thing to enjoy every note that she plays. I think because I want to savor it again later, but you're right. That feels like shortage, like it's going to go away or but something. But why savor something that's ongoing? That's like taking a drink of water and you're not talking and someone says, why aren't you talking? You say, because I don't want to swallow this yet. <laughs> why not? Because if I swallow this, it'll be gone. And I, I want to savor it. I don't want to swallow this. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. Like there'll never be another drink of water. Yeah. The other part of clarification that I want, and there's part of me that doesn't want to even need it, but I want it, so what the hell, um, <laughs> is there's this part of me that wants validation, and I feel it when I'm in the moment that no validation is needed. That's what we were going to say to you. You've already found your validation by saying, I like it so much, I want to savor it, and I want to capture it forever because it feels so good. What better evidence of alignment could one find? I don't know. So why does the want continue? Because you're a human. Oh. <laughs> because you are somewhat still oriented toward needing validation. But you see, you bring to us the exact point that we started with and that we care most about making all day. You want other humans to high five you when you're being high fived by your source with the thrill. And so why look for the other validation? Well, because I've looked for it all of my life. That's what humans do. We get good at things so that other people can look at us and say, oh, you're really good at that. And we say, there's nothing wrong with that. We're not wanting you to hold back and not shine. We want you to carry on and kick your feet high and feel glorious about life. And we love it when others are thrilled when they see you do it. But we want the main reason to be, it just feels so good to me when I hook up with source and kick up my heels. So the sound of the voice for lack of a better word changes sometimes it has a masculine sense sometimes feminine sometimes group and I wonder what I like that, that is. because what that means is you understand that it's a stream of consciousness and that there are many voices in this family of teachers that you're tapping into and different questions that you care about could be eliciting different resources so is there a feeling of that validates it within that makes it 
that I can be sure. I know when I reread the words later that they're clearly not mine, and I feel very confident about that. That might also be part of why I like writing it down, because in the moment, it doesn't seem very important. Well, they are your words. They are your words because you've translated a vibration into those words. And this is a process whereby you're getting better and better and better at that. But the main point to focus on is not the words that you're interpreting. It's the vibration that you have discovered. It's the vibration that you've calibrated to. That's what you want to celebrate. For most people, they'll calibrate to this vibration. And the only explanation or validation of that calibration that will come to them will be in the form of emotion. That's enough. But sometimes those like you or those like Esther, when the emotion is present, want to put words around the emotion. Just know that the emotion is enough. And if you want more, you can have more. In Esther's case, it wasn't her asking. It was Jerry's. Jerry knew that they had tapped in to something profoundly exciting to him and it was the power of his desire that kept summoning it because he and Esther were identical vibrations they'd been calibrating to one another for many many years they were calibrated to one another before either one of them was born that's what soulmates are is those of you who are of the same frequency and you come forth intending to find one another again and renew your calibrations you see and so Esther had the advantage of him doing the summoning which is leading us to the next important point and that is if you've got a question the vibration of the question is different than the vibration of the answer so if you're calibrated in very fine terms to your question you're not going to hear the answer as well that's why you want to put some distance between let life form the questions within you and then sit with an inactive question your inner being knowing what your questions are and your inner being will flow answers to those questions but if you sit to receive with your list of questions you cannot be in the step one mode of asking and the step three mode of receiving at the same time well that might explain why sometimes the answer comes and then I think oh that must be the question was the answer came before you're too question. much in your head about this okay I do I know gosh how do I not it's do all right. that it's all right because think about it we don't want you to be hard on yourself about it you're translating through that part of your brain so of course that part of your brain is going to be sort of kind of active we're just asking the same thing of you relative to this as we're asking of everybody relative to not needing physical approval look for your non-physical harmony calibrate to non-physical rather than to the physical you're doing really well just have fun with it there's nothing serious going on you're not here to save the world you don't need to write the last book that will ever be written unless it's fun to write a book then write it we want to find a way that you can hear us and know it when we say it but of course that defies everything else that we've already said here this morning it's not our job to make you get it it's only our job to get it so we get it and if you want to get it come and get it I feel so good in those moments and usually the voice will kind of release me like almost like you know we're adjourned sort of and there's a I don't want to leave I, I feel like it's obviously oh done and I feel that's all good but living out in the world doesn't feel as good can well, that's I problem yeah can I make that my whole world feel that good yeah but then you'll croak okay that's what it feels like to croak oh. I like this so much I don't want any more of this <laughs> that's fine come on we're having a good time over here okay. <laughs> so if I'm not then I'm choosing to stay what you really want to do is get so good at calibrating under those conditions that that calibration is lasting through your day so that the best of who you are is matching up with the best of others here's a good way to visualize this imagine a board about as big as this platform and it has thousands of little LED lights on it and you are one of them and you're thinking a thought so your light lights up 
and the vibrational content of that thought then all the other lights on the board that are in the same vicinity light up and that represents your world for this moment so your Henri all the Henri's in the airport will make their way to you <laughs> you're joyful you'll be surrounded by all the happy little dogs and children you can just see it right in front of you and it's more than the definiteness of those kinds of things with people it's thoughts come that way and memories come that way and new ideas come that way when you calibrate to something that feels really good then anything in the vicinity that you're ready for is yours and then you will hear you say I don't ever want to be other than that you get so accustomed to being tuned in tapped in turned on that nothing else will do and that doesn't mean that you won't have those other moments you will you'll have a lot of them but what it will do is amplify your awareness of what you really want and there's nothing wrong with stepping back into those moments where life causes you to ask for more those are necessary to your expansion so understanding all of this really helps no one said to you go forth and only be in step three go forth and have at it and ask questions and live some life that makes you know that you want more the evolution of all things is what will always be there is no regression there is only more and humans don't adjust to that inevitability very well Esther moved into a house that's really different from the house she was in before very different in terms of style and at first she thought well I'll just bring all the things that Jerry and I have gathered and I'll take them to my new house and then she thought it won't look good it's a whole different kind of house so then she thought well I'll just take the things with me that I can't bear not to take what influence is she under is she under the influence of source or is she under the influence of lack and sad and crap <laughs> so she gave a lot of it away happily it was so fun to watch it go to different places and then she brought with her the pieces that she could not bear not to bring and not one of them looks right <laughs> every one of them is wrong every piece she dragged from the past into her new present is wrong it sticks out like a sore thumb let me go <laughs> let me go somewhere else let me be new to someone else because I don't fit here sort of a metaphor for what's happening with so many of your thoughts and so many of your beliefs and so many of everything you're constantly changing and you've got to stay up to speed with who you are you just can't keep dragging who you used to be forward because who you used to be doesn't fit with who you now are yeah thank you yeah. I just want to say one thing not a question I just want to say thank you for always keeping your word, always being consistent. It changed my life to see that in a, in a, a teaching. So thank you for that. And those words just came right through you in perfect vibrational accuracy. You just absolutely received those words. What you're confirming through that receiving and through that expression is that this is what tuning to your source energy is always about this is the difference between calibrating to your source who will always keep its word and calibrating to somebody else who's that's not their job you get so mad at people that they are not able to do something that they weren't born to do for you so many people trying so hard to be something they weren't born to be and then feeling bad because they're failing and you resenting them because they're failing and them resenting you because you're resenting them because they're failing pretty funny isn't it yeah yeah thank you yeah really good thank you really good.